messiness. I live. I live by messiness. So, uh, back to the 100 days. What we did this morning, uh, we sort of looked at, there's a two-phase thing going on. There's this stuff about polishing when you get to day 70, and only at day 70 think about polishing. Because then you can turn that way and finish the last 30% off, and you've polished. Before then, all you can, the best you can hope for is some curiosity, guess it's a better part of me, and scepticism or suspicion. That's, that's what this is now, curiosity and scepticism. So that's that bit. And we spoke, well, and now I want to speak about this thing called messiness. And uh, I've got some handouts for you here, and I should, I'm going to... Now, technically, if I don't want to fail my Certificate of Education, I should give these out afterwards. But I'm going to give them out now, because uh, I'll only forget. So, collar these. Messy, grab one and then... Uh, can we take one for Jess or, or whatnot, and... Can I have to take the crumpled one for the other quiz? Yeah, oh yes, if you say, yes. So that'd be absolutely brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got the crumple. I've got. Do you want the crumple one off me now, Ad? Yeah, I'll give it to him. Yeah, I can do that. I'll give you this one now. Uh, right, good. So, what you what you've got now there is messiness. You should have the messiness one, I think. Uh, confirm. So that's for Chris Thank there. Yeah. So messiness. So. If we've got these 100 days, metaphorically speaking, a year, two years, my argument is, you don't, until you get to 70, on the whole, just be messy. Now, for some of you, I'm not looking at Ange. <laughs> for some of you, messiness, is, how do we say, a natural state of effect? No, it isn't. Actually, you're not messy at all. I don't think this. I think messiness is something different. Um, and that was a cheap joke, Angie. Because I think messiness is, is a bit different to collecting everything. There's a different, a jack, a, a, a jack door or a magpie collect everything. That's about knowing when you've got enough, almost. Messiness is something which is, I like the idea that you should purposefully be looking to disrupt muddy waters, kick things over, look underneath, do all this stuff until day 70. That's roughly what I'm gonna be suggesting. It's everything that you're not meant to do. It's everything that your supervisors are gonna moan at you. It's everything, though, that any textbook <laughs> is going to say, oh no, don't do this. But you're level eight now. And the difference between level eight and any other level is that the rules are different. Your job's harder. The task ahead of you is absolutely immense. You've got to, by the day 100, in two years' time, technically three, but we're cheating, right? So we're going to get you finished quick. Right? So two years' time, you have got to have done something no one else has ever done in the world. And just as important, you've got to know it. That's your task. Cool, blimey. You've got to run faster than any other man. Or as the equivalent. Now, I'm no slouch, right? But Hussein Bolt, uh, he, he might just nick it off me. But when you come up with your original idea, he might still be faster, but it's your idea. You know, that's, that's, and that's the task ahead of you. And so if we try and compare the same tools that we do level seven, six, and five with the level eight tools, guess what? We're going to be out of, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. So if I was trying to give you strategy until day 70, give or take 
maybe 5%. Your best chance is that, remember I said this morning, the flexibility, messiness. Messiness as a strategy is not bad. It will give you, what have I done, what have I done? Contribution. Messiness for messiness, because what does messiness mean you have to do? Go and tidy your room, young lady. That's what you have to do. If you have a messy room, before you can get your, before you go to the ball, you tidy your room. And that's the metaphor, isn't it? That's what, so, if you've always got a tidy room, you'll have a tidy room over here. <laughs> ah, shit, my tidy room over here looks exactly as same as my tidy room here. Everything's in the same order, everything's. The metaphor is, even though every one of your supervisors, every one of your examiners, every person at an APR, it's funny, I've just been speaking as well about APRs and this, that and the other, everyone in that is gonna expect you know where you're going. Oh yes, no, no. And they won't no, understand any of our 100 day thing. They'll understand the concept if you mention it to them, but you know, it's top secret. And so they'll be going, oh, uh, and you'll be going, well, yes, well, I got, I got to day 50 and they'll be looking at you. Uh, and I, I still didn't know what I was doing. You didn't know what you were doing, the horror. But for us, it's a strategy. So let's have a look. It's a very good strategy. Know nothing, be curious, remember all that stuff? Until you get to day 70. Difficulties with messiness. Most of us don't like mess. Most of us vacuum at least once a week. Actually, I don't vacuum once a week. I should vacuum once a week. These lot vacuum twice a week. So that means your OCD is gonna get the better of you. It always does, doesn't it? You'll go, no! You'll be here on day 40, 50 going, what am I doing? I'm vacuuming. <laughs> I'm trying to vacuum. And I'll be saying, you know what? Don't vacuum, man. Just, just sit in the mess and write your way out of it. Think your way out of the mess. So it is, clever, it is clever, but how do you deal with some of this mess? Well, let's have a look at some of the stuff I've written. And uh, I, I read this just before thinking about it, I was having some dinner. And uh, there's some bits I really quite like, but who the hell is Lindsay Wagner? Does anyone know who Lindsay Wagner is? Well, I'll tell you who she is. She is Wonder Woman. Or was she the bionic woman? I get mixed up with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can remember at the time being, you know, it's one of these things that if you were a prepubescent or pubescent uh, teenager growing up in the 1970s, like such as myself, I mean, such as the other me, because I'm born in 82, then everyone knew Lindsay Wagner. I've written here, uh, I recently figured a few things out. I was reading a big book, which left me feeling inadequate. And we've all done that. And messiness is all about feeling inadequate. That's all it is. It's just a feeling. Now you can have lots of feelings. Why not have a different feeling? Why not have one of acceptance? I'm inadequate. Oh, I feel better about that. Accept that you're inadequate. You're never going to know it all. You're never going to know what you're doing. But messiness drives this in you. So, uh, a feeling inadequate. I suspect you know the sensation. So I worked out. I rarely comprehend things first time round. That's what messiness is, isn't it? I, and I go on to say, I wish I had a... So, uh, I worked out, I really comprehend... Now, this may not strike as being a radical discovery until you realise it's taken me 50 years. And it would have still continued unless I'd have gone, Stop! None of this in, 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 in inadequacy. What's the opposite of inadequacy? In inadequacy. In in. You know what I'm trying to say. 
I'm just going to be inadequate. That's my first, so I have to hold my hand up and go, I, in the spirit of messiness, am going to be inadequate. Now, as funny as that seems, it's really difficult to deal with. Level eight, you're all inadequate. Level seven, you're all masters of method. You're very good at level seven, you got one. You could piss it. You could do a ma I'll tell you what, you guys could do a masters in 100 days. You could, we said that last week. You could easily. What's the difference? Now I'm expecting you to know nothing, be curious and be suspicious. Uh, and I've written, uh, it took me 50 years. It is the result of my 1970s comprehensive, comprehensive education, which rewarded those who could read well and subtly ridiculed those needing more time. And anyone who experienced the 1970s comprehensive education, yeah, you know, you, Mr. Smith, my old headmaster, I hope you know what you did to me. You see what you churned out. That's a, anyone who experienced a comprehensive education would know there's a certain truth in that, that there's a certain mechanicalness, a machine-like way. And that's sort of a doctoral thing as well, that there's a machine-type way of you doing it. So what I'm suggesting to you secretly as a strategy, get in this middle bit now. You're in this middle bit of your work, your portfolio or whatnot, and you're just not going to know. Suffer it, suffer it. And the quicker you get through the suffering, the better. But suffer it. If you don't suffer, you've cheated and you know it. And you'll get to here and you'll go, ah, got the red gowns. But you'll never write or publish or do anything because you won't have the confidence. If you get to here and you've cheated, guess what? Brilliant. You got red gowns and you and you beat the system. That's brilliant. And there's many that have. But if you did get to here and didn't and you felt the pain and the burn of the you'll publish a lot, you'll write a lot, you'll go to a lot of conference because you will know your stuff and you will start to notice that you know more stuff than others about your stuff. And it will motivate you more. You gotta suffer. Right, so that's messiness. A bit more. And I've written, uh, throughout my life, I've longed for a photographic memory, a high IQ, and a signed copy of 1976 Lindsay Wagner calendar. Uh, and so that's where Lindsay Wagner comes in. But to no avail, uh, because these prizes are very elusive to idiots like me. Uh, so, ba boom. No matter how much. I think I know others will still make up their own decisions in the messy area. They will. And let's face it, most of our decisions about each other and one are usually quite correct or substantive in lots of ways. It's the consistency. People will know, other people who have experienced mess will know you've been in the mess. They really will. People who have never been in the mess ignore the mess and generally sort of go, you don't need the mess, shouldn't be in the mess. But you'll know it if you've been in the mess, because you'll know they haven't been in the mess. Oh, I know what I'm saying. This is a mess. It's a mess. Okay, so messiness is a strategy, consolidating. So we're back up here now, day 70, right? Consolidating as a, with a theoretical model. If things are going right, then, day 70, you are now entangled in your data, or at least aware that you should be. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at Wen Jing there going, yeah, you should be. Yeah. Uh, you have a sore head and a nagging feeling of impending doom. And you've had this feeling for the last 70 days, metaphorically speaking, since you started the course. Okay, so. Uh, uh, <coughs> this induction of thought is it's not unique or universal, but it is the result of your continuing repositioning and not knowing what it is you're doing and you're dancing with your data and dancing with yourself probably and just dancing with, trying to cling on to anything to work out what's going to happen. Remember though, as long as you accept, you accept that you're inadequate and you get to day 70 
and you're going, oh, I'm still dancing, and you turn around and you go, it's then that you'll start to work out order, because I want to go to the ball. I want to go to the ceremony. I need to tidy this up. Make some mess and then tidy it up. Do it on purpose. Do it on purpose. If you can't find contribution, make it happen. Can I just share therapy? So when I was a child, I was really bad at school. I'm still a child, but when I was a child, I was really bad My school report would say, Angela's not proud to go to a on a regular. And I remember when the head was leaving and the teacher says to me, this way I was last day, and said to me, Angela's work is absolutely amazing. But when you look around there, there's things everywhere, <laughs> literally. And what is happening? I was just so focused on the words. Pens, everything would drop all over the place. And it was literally how you described me, this paper piling up literally around. And I'm just focused on this thing here. Yeah. And I've actually not gone out of it. But we said that last week, didn't we? And we, but in my head, I don't think that's a bad thing, you know. I think because we we just don't notice the mess mostly. It's always there, really. It's always, and and it's relative. One man's mess or one woman's mess is another. And so I love the idea that you've got loads of stuff and got your notebooks. How many notebooks have you been taking over the last course? And you sort of think, but somewhere along the line. You're going to get to day 70, you're going to go, oh, can I do something with this? Now, that's a job in itself consolidating, isn't it? That's what you're starting with this portfolio, really. That's what your portfolio is. It's just starting to see if you can do something. That's a, but don't limit your messiness, I reckon. And do what you're good at. And if you're not very good at mess, just be messy. I dare you. Just, and what do I, well, what do we mean? Messiness as a strategy is to not fall, we said it this morning, don't fall in love with your theories too early, don't fall in love with your, your method, take each day as it comes and be flexible. That's what messiness really comes down to. Don't fall in love. Don't, because the minute I go, Oh, it's day one. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to answer the question, how will I know when I've got to day 100? Oh, I'm on day 100. Oh, shit, I knew that back there. I haven't really contributed. That's what will happen. You know what? If you were doing a red, if you were in red and you were in the lab, you can contribute, you need to have a fixed design. You need, if you're red, you need to go, there's the gap. We, we know that cell bodies do this, we know this. Now I'm looking for mitochondria in something and I'm gonna do it. I've got a sample of 100,000 test tubes and I'm gonna, yeah, you need fixed design. Huge samples, huge statistical variances and huge statistical analysis. That's what you need for a PhD or a doctorate in a lab. I don't see many of you working in a lab. In fact, I see every one of you working with, go careful how I say this, not organisms. I see you working with people. And that means you're social scientists and that changes everything. But also, we're now level eight. That's why you need mess. Level seven don't like mess and you wouldn't have got your masters at level seven if you'd have just had a messy strategy. You just wouldn't have got it because what you were trying to demonstrate is that you understand research and science. What you didn't know, and nor do you supervise, you understand red science. But now here you are, and you've come on such a long way. So, I'll go on to waffle on a bit about there. Uh, it, it's about that inter interpreting, all that sort of malarkey. But, to sort of bring it to a sum up, or so I don't drag on forever. Plus, I'm not sure I'm, what timing have we got at the moment, just so I know I don't want to necessarily drag you over. We're coming up to about an half hour, 20 minutes. Yeah, so I'm, doing, I'm, I'm sort of on target. So, don't, well, actually, these tasks that are on this handout might be worth looking at in the weeks to come. Don't kill yourself with them. 
because I've, I've sort of, in, if you were on day sort of 70 ish now, and we're looking to, we've got the mess as a strategy, and now you're trying to consolidate that or whatnot, you should be trying to sort of complete a second draft of writing. But this brings me to this bit. Say now you're in your mess. And, you, and you're purposefully creating mess, and, you, and you're definitely just not sticking with one thing and, you, and you're all over the shop and you don't know what you're doing. But you've got a rough idea. You've got enough of an idea to know that you're in the mess. That's all you need. And I said it earlier, just how do you, get, how do you, how do you progress through the mess? Because it's scary. I think it's through writing. I think you should use your writing in order to think not the opposite way around. So the old model is that you'd sort of know exactly what you're doing and you'd be writing up, writing up, and you'd usually write up in the last quarter. That's why, oh, I'm taking out a year to write up. Well, I don't know, you might be able to do that at posh university, but you can't do it here. Especially if you want to get at the end and go, oh, I've contributed and I'm confident I've done it. I think you should be start collecting data on day eight. You start analysing on day Nine, you start writing up on day 10. And, and, and so you write every day, 20 minutes a day. We said that last week, remember? 20 minutes. And that's how you get yourself through the mess. Now, how you write and what you write, oh, that's part of the mess. Because what I've found is your draft one will look nothing like your draft two, but your draft two is built on your draft one and then your draft three. But you look at a draft four compared with a draft one and, you've, and you'll have done the business to get through those. But we know what I'm saying sort of makes sense. We also know that it's easier said than done. That's the point about mess. Mess is just as much a state in your head. I can't do this, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't. Well, you got yourself in the mess. You can get yourself out, I promise. And that's, so if I was in the mess, the strategies I'd use got to be something to do with writing. Why does it do with writing? Because then I can think my way out. I actively have to do stuff. I am tempted by the devil in the mess. The opposite of writing your way out is, what do you often tell yourself when you don't know what you're doing? I'm doing some literature. <laughs> now we spoke about that in the last blog yesterday, right? We don't do the literature no more. The literature, I'm gonna read a book. <laughs> no, don't, don't, because that, is the mess, you, that's you vacuuming. That's you vacuuming up, isn't it? That's me going, oh, I'm gonna go find out what to do now. Writing is different to reading. To write, you have to be thinking. You have to realize that you know nothing. You have to realize your limitations. You have to go, shit, what am I gonna write? <laughs> How do I write this? Whatever it is you do, whether you go, you know what, I'm just going to write an article. I'm just going to write an article. I'm going to write a 2,000 word article for the nursing standard on my work. How do you start? Or whether it's a poem, or whether it's a limerick. There was a young man from wherever. I should have, I should have made one. <laughs> there was a young man who'd been. See what I'm doing here? What rhymes with been? Oh, Dean. Anyway. Right, 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 right. If you've got nothing to write, go and do an interview because you're in the middle of the mess. Transcribe it. That's right. Do something yeah. each day. If you don't know what to do, randomly flick through the telly till you get to a documentary, watch it and apply it to your main topic. No matter if it's got no connection whatsoever, make it fit. Forge connection. That's mess. Because what is forging connection? In the middle of mess, there's loads of connection. You just haven't seen it. And as I said just, there's mess all around me. I just can't see it. The order starts with a hero. See what I'm doing? And the hero travels through a whole bunch of stuff. Your mess is an ordeal. 
Your mess is the belly of the whale. I could have called it the belly of the mess. That's where you're at. You need boon, and then you've got to return. You've got to get to 70 with the boon. I got it. I got it. That sort of works. Shit, now I've got to consolidate and write this up somehow, or continue to write it up into a draft four. Polish, polish, polish. That's the metaphor, that's the plan. You will write your way out of your mess. Even if you don't know what you're going to write, write something every day. Not knowing what to write is no longer an excuse. Not writing is, well, I think it should be a capital offence. I think, right, if you don't write, uh, each, we, we put the hit squad together, come around and kill you. It's as simple as that. I think uh, there's no way around it. And uh, get the work done. Get the right. So if you don't know what to write, make something to write. Make it, invent it, forge it, emerge it. There's nothing to be discovered here. There's nothing to be discovered apart from the order in the mess. Go tidy your room. I told them to tidy their room. We'll see if they do it. Okay.